Welcome to a Sunny Side Up Life podcast, a show for the woman who is ready to live an abundant life full of freedom and positivity. I'm Sammy Womack, and I'm on a mission to help you break free from survival mode, gain financial freedom, stay motivated, and focus on what matters most. Join the movement, and let's start living on the brighter side of life together. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. You guys, I just... I have to be real with you for a minute. The worst part about recording a podcast is having to turn my music off. (laughs) I love listening to music while I'm working, but obviously I can't listen to music while I'm recording, and I also can't listen to music when I'm editing. So uh, there are big chunks in my week where I have to work with no music on. And I'm like sitting down to record this with you guys, <laughs> for you guys. And I'm like literally procrastinating on actually hitting record because I didn't want to turn my music off. I did everything I could possibly do with my music on um, before I hit record. So anyway, random thought. You guys, um, I just recently did something really super exciting, speaking of music, that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I created a exclusive Spotify playlist. Yes, it's like almost two hours long or so, somewhere in there. Um, So it's a good, like a good chunk, like you can get a lot of cleaning done or work done or dancing around your living room done, (laughs) whatever. I do all of the above. Um, And I made this exclusive Spotify playlist, which you can have the free version of Spotify. That's what I have. You don't have to pay for Spotify. Um, I made it an exclusive playlist for my Rise and Shine newsletter list. So if you guys sign up for my newsletter, that Spotify playlist link will be in your welcome email, um, along with the archives where you can go back and read all of the exclusive blog posts, all of the guest articles, all of the resources that I've recommended, all of that. You get all of that in your welcome email when you sign up. Um, and if you're not on the newsletter list, you're missing out because it is so much fun, you guys. Like It is so great, and it's a place for you to get things that you can't get anywhere else. Um, tips and tricks and and coupon codes and resources and just all of that good stuff. Um, so there's going to be a link here in the show notes for you to sign up or you can go to a sunnysideoflife.com slash newsletter and get on the list. It's free and I will send you an email every single Tuesday morning. Um, so if you're like, uh, like the podcast is only once a week, what do I do? There you go. It gives you something else to look forward to. <laughs> um, so anyway, on topic, Sammy, stay on topic. Okay. You guys, I want to talk to you today about flipping your clutter into cash. So what exactly does that mean? Um, so I told you guys a couple of weeks ago that we were going to be talking about this kind of on the theme of like spring cleaning and all of that, like getting out of our winter blues funk that a lot of us get in. Um, And so when we are going through and doing our spring cleaning and decluttering, this is actually a really good chance for you to start making some extra money by selling some things. And especially at the beginning of your debt-free journey, but honestly, any time, even when you're debt-free like I am, Um, you could still sell things because who doesn't need some extra cash, right? Uh, so when you, when you start your debt-free journey, like you're, you're going to need to look for any way possible to get some extra money and to really like kick that budgeting journey into high gear. Um, so if maybe you work at a job where overtime isn't, um, optional, or maybe you're a stay at home parent and you just want to feel like you're, you just want to contribute to the money, which is kind of where I was at the beginning of our journey. Um, I was staying home with the girls. Um, I hadn't started my, my business or anything like that. And I was just like, I felt so helpless, just kind of sitting at home, just kind of not, I mean, obviously I was doing something, but I wasn't doing anything that could help us financially on our journey. And I felt really helpless. So this was a really good time for me to start finding extra things around the house to sell to not only just 
feel like I was contributing, but to actually financially contribute to our goals. Um, so it was kind of a win-win there. Um, so uh, along the, along those lines, actually what kind of inspired me to do this was my whole intentional living journey actually started with minimalism and actually started with Ali Kasaza and her uncluttered home course and listening to her and following everything that she teaches about minimalism. And this was, oh my gosh, years ago, five maybe years ago, um, I was pregnant with Izzy. Yeah. So it would have to be like five years ago. And anyway, I just kind of found her in this like dark time of my rock bottom um, period that I talked to you guys about. And I was like, look, my life is just like crumbling. I've got to clean up this place. <laughs> like I've got to get it together. And a lot of what she shares about is how minimalism spills into everything of your life. And so when you get your surroundings taken care of and decluttered, um, you're going to reap the benefits in every different aspect of your life. And when I started to declutter, I started to feel better. Like my, my depression was, was lightning. Um, and just, I had more free time and all of that. And then I was like, making this huge donation pile in my garage. And I was like, I could sell some of this stuff. And Allie's always really um, quick to say, like, don't declutter and just like pile things up in your garage and say you're going to sell them as a way to procrastinate on actually getting rid of the stuff. So kind of disclaimer here, there are some things that aren't worth my time to sell. There are some things that um, either are going to be too time consuming or aren't going to make enough money or are just honestly just trash and just need to go in the trash. And so you have to kind of set that boundary for yourself and know that going into it, like, you know, kind of ask yourself, am I setting this aside just to procrastinate or am I going to legitimately sell this? And also making sure to give yourself like a timeline. Okay. If this doesn't sell by the end of the week or the end of the month, or if I haven't, like whatever is still here by whatever day just needs to get donated, you know, set those boundaries for yourself. Um, so I just kind of like to disclaim that because a lot of people will just hoard stuff for the sake of, oh, I'm going to sell it one day and then that day never comes. <laughs> uh, I've definitely done that as well, but it's just kind of setting those boundaries for yourself and um, kind of going into it intentionally. But anyway, um, I just kind of started to see the ripple effect of that, of the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And I actually have a whole podcast episode on this, which was like way back, one of the first few episodes. So I'll link to that in the show notes for any new folks around here who haven't listened to that episode. It's a really good one. Um, but basically the message behind that episode is just the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And we we see that when we start to live intentionally and we start to see that ripple effect of I'm someone who manages my time well. I'm someone who takes care of my body, which spills over into, you know, I have enough energy to actually do this thing. And I actually, you know, I wake up on time. Like, it's just every, it spills into everything. Slowly but surely, you start to just get your entire life in gear. And that was so true for me. It was, it was minimalism and that spilled into budgeting. And I was like, Hey, you know, I'm actually kind of feeling better. Let's tackle this next goal, which was money. And then it was like, okay, my house is pretty decluttered. I'm, I'm getting on track with my money. I need some self, um, self care in, in, in that way for me was building my business. And it was like, I have a little bit more free time. What can I do with this extra time? I need to do something that's for me and also helping others. That something like exists outside of my role as a wife and a mom. And that's where I launched my business and that's built into setting goals and on and on and on and on. And here I am today, five years later into this intentional living journey. Anyway, rambling about minimalism now. Obviously, I'm pretty passionate about this simple living, intentional living kind of um, thing. But 
I think the key here with flipping your clutter into cash is making sure that it's actually worth your time. So if you're someone who could, okay, say you're a nurse, for example, and you could pick up a couple of extra shifts and make four times as much money as you could make by spending a weekend doing a garage sale, maybe that's not worth your effort. You see what I mean? Um, there's actually, they actually talk about this in the book, um, The Millionaire Mind, about how it actually makes more sense for a doctor to, or a lawyer, or somebody, you know, somebody who has a high income to pay someone to do their yard work because that's two hours that they could have spent at the office making several hundred dollars an hour versus paying someone like $50 to mow their grass, right? So you kind of have to weigh the options of like, is it worth your time? In my case, I was a stay-at-home mom. Um, I had a lot of free time on my hands and you know, it, it was worth, it was worth my time. So make sure to weigh those options. Like, would it be better for you to spend five hours a week meeting people to do Facebook sales? Or could you just pick up an extra shift and make four times as much money or twice as much money or whatever? Um, but Anyway, so if you treat it like a true side hustle, this can actually be really, really helpful. And I'm going to talk to you guys in a minute about how you can actually turn this into like a legit job <laughs> and how people actually do this for a living or a part-time living. But there are several places that you can sell things. And thankfully, we live in a digital internet age where this makes it so much easier because I think, you know, basically back in, in our day of when we were kids, all you could really do was have a garage sale. Uh, there were a few consignment shops, but I feel like it's kind of more trendy now to have like a consignment shop and for people to, um, you know, like antique and kind of things like that. We didn't have Joanna Gaines back in the day to tell us that <laughs> we should want rustic furniture, we should want antiques, things like that. Um, so I think that we're really privileged to live in this kind of age where we have access to places to sell things online, um, used things are trendy and all that. I feel like we should kind of run with that. <laughs> um, so I actually talked about this topic a few weeks ago in one of my Rise and Shine newsletters. And every single week in those newsletters, I will give you guys access, early access to a blog post that won't come out for several weeks um, to the general public. So that's another benefit of being on the newsletter list. So I talked about this a couple weeks ago, but I was like, all right, this topic is too good. Like I have to share this on the podcast. Um, so here we are. But one of the best places to sell things online obviously is eBay. And I feel like some people get overwhelmed with eBay. It's actually not that hard to sell things on eBay. Um, eBay is really great about when you go in to set up a seller account and you go in to list something. If you have basic internet knowledge, you can totally do this. It walks you through step by step. Like it prompts you what to do. And if you have any trouble, the great thing about eBay is that you can always go and search other people's listings to see like, what kind of pictures did they take? How many pictures did they take? What does their description look like? What are, how much are they selling it for? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if you have something and you're like, I have no idea how much this is worth. I don't even know if this is worth my time of putting this on eBay. Go to eBay and search. And in the search um, specifications, click completed sales, not just like what people listed things for, because that only tells you what they tried to sell it for. If you click completed sales, you can see what things actually sold for or what things like ran out of time and didn't sell. And, and you can kind of um, weigh your options there of like what worked, what didn't, how much are people actually selling this thing for and all of that. Um, 
And that's really, really helpful. So I, I've seen, I've heard a lot of people like they'll go on eBay and they'll search for this antique thing that they have and they'll be like, oh, they're, they're, it's going for $400 on eBay. Okay, are they asking $400 or did they actually get $400? So there's a big difference there. Um, but eBay is the p perfect place to sell like collectible things that you have. You can literally sell say you were a Beanie Baby hoarder like I was in the late 90s, early 2000s, and you have an epic Beanie Baby collection, but you know, okay, like it's just sitting in a box. This is kind of silly, which is exact. I literally had a trash bag full of Beanie Babies that I ended up selling. Um, so you can go on there and sell an entire lot, which is like code for a group, an entire group lot of beanie babies and you can sell like 30 beanie babies various sizes blah 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 um you could go in and list every single one out or you could just be like a group picture this is all the beanie babies you get 50 bucks or whatever and it's a really good place to do things like that um you know, if you just have stuff that's just collecting dust that's just taking up space in your storage unit or your garage sell it you guys like if it has no sentimental value or even if it does have a little bit of sentimental value like weigh the options of like what do i want more a box full of collectibles or a shelf full of collectibles or the extra cash right um maybe you have some antiques or just things that you have inherited that you don't actually want or don't actually need but you're like keeping out of guilt you guys, that's silly. Like, yes, I have things that are sentimental. Like, I have quilts that my great-grandma made. But to me, they're worth more than their monetary value. Um, but I had tons of things that were like, yeah, somebody gave that to me, but I would, like, much rather have the $40. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> um, anything, anything random or unusual, like, eBay is your go-to place. Like, give it an eBay search before you do anything else and see what it's worth, see what it's actually selling for and kind of go from there. Uh, so also Facebook marketplace is amazing. Like it is the catch all I feel like of resale. Uh, there are also, you know, now we have Facebook marketplace where it kind of groups all of those local classified groups together. When I, when I was actually doing this, we didn't have Facebook marketplace yet. So you had to go and post individually on every single Facebook classified group. Um, but it is a really good place to kind of do a quick turnaround sale. Um, so something like eBay might take you like a week or two, and then you have to wait for the funds to come through PayPal and all that. If you do Facebook, you can sell it sometimes that same day. And Facebook has where you can digitally pay someone through a Facebook message or you can do Venmo or you can do PayPal or they can pay you in cash and it's so much faster that way. But again, like you might not get as much money for something really unique that you could get on eBay. So Facebook Classified is really good for things like household items, just random stuff around the house, furniture. And the thing about resell is that your furniture doesn't have to be like in pristine condition. There are actually a lot of people who are intentionally shopping for torn up pieces of furniture, like pieces that are worn or need painting or because they want to upcycle them and they want to resell them. So they're looking for a nightstand for 10 bucks that they can paint and they don't really care if it's dirty or stained or, you know, scratched up or whatever. They don't care because they just, they're just looking for something to upcycle. So that's a really good time to get rid of stuff that is kind of not so great and just kind of get it off your hands. Or you could, you could do it the opposite way. Like you could look for things to upcycle so you could resell for more. I actually did that a lot as well. I would go to auctions and things and I would pick up nightstands or a dress. I did a dresser one time. It was really fun. 
I bought this just plain wood dresser for little to nothing and I repainted it and it's when chevron stripes y'all remember chevron stripes when we went through that phase um it's when chevron stripes were like the it thing and I went through I went and painted it with chevron stripes and it was so so cute and I sold it for like $80 or $100 or something and it was awesome um or I've had a lot of success on Facebook Marketplace with reselling toys because you guys know that I did a huge house declutter going from 3,200 square feet to 750 square feet. So we got rid of a lot of toys. <laughs> so Facebook Marketplace is a really good place to get rid of old toys or baby items like a baby bathtub or, you know, a baby swing, things that you might not need anymore. And also, I had a lot of success with selling my kids' clothes. We also did a huge clothing purge. Obviously, we purged. We did a huge everything purge. And we had a lot of extra clothes. And this was a really good way for me to sell those extra clothes. And what I would do was I would bundle them to make it worth my time. So nobody wants to really meet someone like in a bank parking lot or like Walmart parking lot or whatever to sell a $1 shirt, right? But I would bundle them, especially baby clothes. Like this was really awesome for baby clothes. I would just do a group of same size baby clothes and it would be like 10 onesies and five pairs of pants for ten dollars or whatever and I would basically do whatever would fit in like a a grocery bag and I would take a group picture I would take a couple of close-up pictures and I would put everything in the bag and take like a bag to show like basically you're getting an entire bag of clothes for like five or ten dollars and I had so much success doing this and I also would get tons of hand-me-downs from our friends who also have girls I would get like trash bags full of hand-me-downs and obviously like hand-me-downs are amazing but the majority of the time you don't really want or need every single thing that you get handed down. I was like no shame I'm gonna resell this hand-me-down stuff and kind of mix it in with my girls' clothes they didn't need and it was it was amazing like I remember one time specifically that I had grocery bags lined up in my foyer of my house (laughs) and I had this spot in the dining room floor that I would take pictures of the clothes like a good empty spot on the floor and I would just take pictures of these clothes and then I would put them in the bag I'd staple a little note to say like what was in them and then when the person would claim it on Facebook I would write like the name of the person who claimed it what kind of vehicle they were going to be driving when I was meeting them, how much we agreed to, and I would do it all in a little post-it note, like stapled to the bag. And y'all, I made so much money doing this. Like it was, it was really awesome. And I felt so productive because I was decluttering and I was actually earning our family some extra money and I was doing something productive with my time. And it was a win-win all around. And I've seen people do this with adult clothes, with, um, kitchen items with like craft supplies. I did that with craft supplies too. Like I would sell an entire box of craft supplies. I'd be like random craft supplies, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, $20. Who wants it? I did this with with movies. I had um, a pretty epic VHS collection. There were I had multiples of some of some VHSs because I was just like, I had this insane VHS collection. Anyway, so when we moved, I didn't have a huge closet to keep these movies in anymore. And so I had very painfully had to declutter my VHS collection. And, you know, we had a moving sale, like a huge garage sale that was inside our house. And I was left over with tons of stuff obviously and so I went through and I and I hustled through getting it sold and one of the ways that I got rid of the VHSs was I took a huge group picture and I listed how many there were you know a majority are kids movies a few adult movies like not adult movies but (laughs) 
few like R-rated movies. Um, and I posted like the whole group on Facebook classifieds and I threw them all in a huge box, loaded them up in the back of my car and met a lady uh, in the Kroger parking lot and sold the entire box to one person. And I was like, I don't really care if you want some and don't want the others. You pick through them. I'm selling to them super cheap. Here you go. And it was, it was really, really um, awesome. And even towards like the end of our moving sale, we, we posted a group of like everything that's left, come get it all. And there are people who will do that, you guys, because there are people who have resale stores. There are people who just collect a bunch of junk and most of the time you can find someone to come and get everything if you price it to sell. That's another really big uh, disclaimer here is you guys price this stuff to sell, okay? We want to declutter. We want to make money, but we also want to declutter, right? And you're not making any money if you're pricing things too high. So $10 in your pocket is better than a $20 item sitting there because you refuse to take $10 for it. Does that make sense? So price is stuff to sell. And remember that decluttering is also part of the goal here. And actually getting that money in your pocket is part of the goal. So let's talk about Etsy. I love Etsy. It is amazing. It's also really easy to sell on. Uh, it also walks you through list doing a listing and all of that. And, um, they will send you the money digitally. All you have to do is mail it, list it and mail it. And I've sold things on Etsy and it's, it's actually really easy to do. Um, Etsy is the best place to sell homemade stuff or Etsy is even getting more and more into like digital downloads. So if you're someone that has an eye for like graphic design and you can make a really cute printable or something like that you can sell digital stuff too. Um, my cousin sells printable, um, coloring pages with like motivational sayings and I'll actually link to her page here. So she sells these really cute pages and she just makes them digitally and then sells them for a couple dollars. And it's a really, it's a really great, um, way to do things. So if you kind of have an eye for design, you can do digital stuff or you're just a really crafty person. Like there are so many things that you could do with Etsy. What I did was I had a crafting hoarder problem, like legit. I remember the day that I decluttered my craft stuff. Well, not day because it took me several days, honestly, because I literally cried. Like that's how much of a craft hoarder I was. I had so much emotional attachment to my craft supplies. But one of the things that I did was, well, obviously I grouped things into boxes, like random supplies. But another thing that I did was I had tons of fabric. And this is when those ragtie garlands were like the it thing. And they were so easy to make, so fun to make. And I had so much random fabric. So what I did was I made a ton of those ragtie garlands and I put them on Etsy and I sold them. And it was, it was really awesome and really easy to do. So if you have tons of craft supplies that you were going to use for a project, if you're a craft hoarder, like you understand this, uh, this was a real problem for me and use those, like take that time, set that time aside to make those crafts, like treat it like a true part-time job, a true side hustle and set the time aside in your schedule to make those craft projects with the intention to resell them. And again, like price these things to sell. Remember that this stuff was just taking up space in your closet <laughs> or in a storage box or something. It wasn't serving you. It wasn't helping you reach your goal. It was actually just cluttering up your home. It wasn't making you any money. It wasn't doing anything productive. Do something productive with it let it serve you instead of you serving your stuff, right? Um, 
So this was this was really, really helpful for me. And one of the things that really helped me was I would go on Etsy, kind of like what I said about eBay, like I would go on Etsy and I would research what other people were doing, what things were selling. And I was like, oh, ragtie garlands are like the it thing right now. I could so easily do that. I have tons of random fabric and I have tons of twine. Like I can make these and they're selling for X number of dollars and there we go. Uh, so I would research things like that. So if you want to make digital prints, you know, go and research like what is selling, what are they putting in their descriptions, how much are they selling it for, and all of that, um, and kind of scope out your future competitors and get some ideas from there. So, you know, like the ragtie garlands, it might not be something that's on your radar right now, but you go and you see like what's big on Etsy right now. And you're like, oh, I totally could make those or I totally have the supplies for those just just laying around and I could totally do that. Um, so don't um, don't count Etsy out. It is a good side hustle. It really is. So my my last place um, that I want to talk about selling, obviously there are tons of other places that you could sell things, but the and the last notable one that I really want to talk to you guys about is consignment auctions. So I've shared with you guys before that I used to be an auctioneer and that my family is still in the auction business. My grandparents and my mom run a weekly auction and they do estate auctions on the, you know on the weekends and things like that consignment auctions are really the hidden gem the best kept secret of the resale world they they are and the thing about consignment auctions is the general public usually doesn't know that much about them um but you can there are auctions to sell literally anything you can think of Anything from livestock animals to antiques and collectibles to jewelry to random household items to junk to every single thing that you can think of. The, the key here is to find one close to you. That is the difficult part. So if you go on auctionzip.com, which I will link to in the show notes if you forget what <laughs> what the address is. It's auctionzip.com and you can go on there for free and you can search by zip code and then again by radius. So you can do your zip code, some whatever's in a 30 mile radius, whatever's in a 60 mile radius. There's a couple different options. Whatever is driving distance and you can see what auction houses are in your area. And you can also go on there and see like what um like what days of the week they have their auction they'll do like a listing on there kind of like a like a facebook event kind of style so you can you can post pictures like they post pictures on there they post like the date and time they post a description of what they're selling etc cetera, etc cetera. um so you can see what type of items they sell so if they sell random household items you can know that that might be a place that you could sell your random household items or if they sell tools or if they sell collectibles or if they sell furniture whatever it is you can know that that might be a good resource for you to resell things so the thing about auctions is obviously they're going to charge a fee i mean ebay charges a fee etsy charges a fee right um auctions of course are going to charge you a fee so make sure that if you call them or email them to ask them what their fees are. I mean, obviously, they're used to sharing what their fees are. So you're probably going to pay like anywhere from a 10 to a 30% commission, usually, depending on what kind of stuff it is. Sometimes they will require you to do like a buyback fee, meaning that if it doesn't sell, they charge you a fee for their time. So it might be like a dollar an item or $5 an item, depending on obviously um, the value, things like that. Um, they also, some auctions will allow you to do what is called a reserve price, where it would be like your minimum. Like if it doesn't, if it can't sell for $50, I'd rather just keep it. Um, other auctions will do an absolute auction, meaning that no matter what the bid is, it'll sell. 
So make sure you ask about that as well um, because, you know, we we had a lot of issues with our auction where someone would bring in, say, a china cabinet and they had it in their mind that it was worth $300. Whether or not it really was is reg- regardless. But they had it in their mind it was worth $300. And we would say, well, do you want to set a reserve price on this? No, no, no. I just need the money. I just need it to sell. Well, it sells for $100. They're going to be a little bit upset, right? Or if they're just like, I really don't care. I really just need the money. Get it out of here. Just sell it for the best you can. Or I... Uh, if it doesn't sell for $300, I'd rather just keep it and carry it back home. Okay. So there are some questions to ask with the auctions, like make sure that you know what fees you're paying, um, it, what price you're okay with it selling for, et cetera, et cetera. But go to auctionzip.com, search your zip code and see what is in your area. Some things, you know, if you have a really good auction house in your area, our area here, we don't have a lot of auctions, but you know, we're two hours from Houston and obviously there are tons of auctions in Houston. So it might be worth the two hour drive if you can get twice as much money for your grandma's old jewelry or something like that, right? So do some research there. That is honestly the hidden gem of the resale world. And while you're out shopping for auctions, Auctions are also a really great place to buy things. So obviously I'm not supposed to tell you to buy things, but it's a really great place to to get good deals on things. So if you are intentionally shopping for new furniture or new household items or tools or something like that, you have something in mind that you actually need, check out auctions and see if you can buy it used Um, even, there are a lot of auctions. My, my family is right now into doing pallet auctions and they've been getting, um, like the returns from Walmart and JCPenney's, um, Lowe's, places like that. They get the returned items or the items that people order online to pick up in the store and then never come and actually pick up. So they've been doing pallet auctions like that and there's a lot of plate like you can find so much stuff like we get so much stuff from those that people return that there's absolutely nothing wrong with so just side note it's a really great place to buy frugal things as well again just don't let it get out of hand that was where a lot of our clutter came from (laughs) and honestly a good chunk of our debt came from really getting out of hand at auctions so just you know have some boundaries when it comes to that. So you guys, I did a workshop a while back that I have saved the replay of for you guys. And I'm offering um, a replay download of that workshop for a couple dollars. $2.99 is what I'm offering it for. I usually um, only do my replays for like a 48 hour replay period after I host them live. But I thought in the spirit of doing a spring cleaning, you know, needing extra money, I would offer this replay to you guys. If you're interested in it, you can check it out and I'll put the link in the show notes. And in this workshop, I go even more into detail. Like I think it's an hour and a half, like it's over an hour, I know. Um, And I go even more into detail and I, I talk about even more places to sell things like garage sales um, and other places to sell things and how you can actually use a garage sale to actually make money, not just waste a Saturday and how you can actually get rid of things. And I go more into detail about eBay and more into detail about auctions and things that I have, you know, slides in the workshop, things that are easier to do in a workshop versus a podcast. Uh, And so I give you guys a lot of insider tips for for how to sell things for top dollar and actually get rid of things at the same time. A lot of the things that I learned in the auction business, uh, what to sell, where to sell it, 
you know, we would go to garage sale. For example, one of the things that I talk about in the workshop is we would go to garage sales and look for like bargains at garage sales to resell them on eBay or resell them at the auction. Or we would buy things at the auction with the intent to resell them on eBay. So it's just this whole world, a resale world of different levels, different places to sell things, what to look for, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I talk about that more in the workshop, um, just specific strategies and tips and things like that. And I talk even more about how you can actually turn this into a legit side hustle or a full-time job. There are people, I mean, obviously being in the auction business, there there were people who did this for a living, you guys. Like they would buy things at garage sales or buy things at auctions and they would flip them. They would um, put them on eBay. They would put them at a flea market. They would put them in an antique store on consignment. Like they had their own stores, um, everything, everything. And some of the things like they just needed to be literally just taken like a piece of jewelry, literally just taken from a garage sale to eBay. And it was, it was automatically worth more money. Like no prep work at all just needed to be in a different setting to be worth more money. Like, does that blow your mind? And there were other things like people would buy rundown furniture at the auction, for example, and they would take it home, they would paint it, they would put new handles on it, you know, whatever they needed to do and spruce it up a little bit and then resell it at the resale shop or resell it at an antique store, resell it on eBay or resell it on Facebook Marketplace, you know. Um, this can be a legit business, a legit like full-time income, part-time income, side hustle if you take it seriously, if you invest the time in it, this is a really, really like, you guys, I cannot stress this enough. This is a really awesome thing to do if you are a stay-at-home parent. Like, you can drag your kids to a garage sale. <laughs> you can take your kids to an auction with you. You can take your kids to meet people to buy things. Like, people are probably going to freak out when I say that. Um, but you you can. Like, Oh, there are a lot of towns that you can meet like at your police station to resell things or like there's a designated like safe zone placed to sell things. Or I would take like another adult with me. Like I would take my mom or my sister or wait until my husband was home or something like that to meet people to sell things on Facebook. So you can totally do all of these things with a handful of kids in tow <laughs> and you can repurpose furniture and you can make craft projects while your kids play. Like you guys, seriously, like this is, this is a really, really, um, awesome resource. Awesome thing that you can do. So anyway, um, I will link to that workshop where I go into more detail. I give you guys a PDF, like cheat sheet that I call it of what to sell, where to sell it, like the time requirements for each for, you know, versus like a garage sale versus a consignment auction, things like that. So I give you this whole PDF cheat sheet and all of that. Um, so it's a really good workshop, obviously like it, it was, it was a little bit long. So I've wanted to do it again, host it again live, but I'm like, why I've already recorded it. So I'm just going to make the replay available to you guys and save myself an hour and a half of saying the same thing again. Uh, so I hope this is helpful. You guys, um, just remember like if you are going to buy things with the intent to resell them, keep yourself in the restrictions of a budget. Don't blow your budget doing this. Like don't blow your budget buying things with the intent to resell them just to end up hoarding them and wasting your money. Um, so go into it gradually, go into it intentionally, go into it with only a certain amount of money in your pocket so you can't get out of hand. But again, this can be this can be all like life altering for your debt free journey. So if you take it seriously and if you invest the time in it. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys. This is the perfect time. Like 
while you're doing your spring cleaning, look for what can I sell? Where can I resell it? Make yourself a pile like in your garage or in a in your bedroom or like somewhere to set it set your stuff aside in a specific area and treat it like a side hustle set the time aside and um it can really really help you guys so i hope this was helpful you guys make sure that you are um subscribed to the podcast make sure that you are sharing and make sure that you are leaving me reviews I told you guys a couple weeks ago that I was going to start reading reviews live on the podcast. So you guys jump over to iTunes, leave me a review because that is what helps the podcast grow. That's what helps people find out about the podcast. And I am going to start shouting out reviews. So this week's review shout out is by Smile12005. Um, and she says really powerful five stars this podcast is really motivational and powerful i love her message so much that it kind of caught me off guard but i'm hooked now that is so sweet thank you so much you guys are amazing all of the reviews are so so sweet i appreciate you guys so much um so jump over leave me a review and maybe you'll get a shout out on another podcast all right you guys i will talk to you guys next week bye guys